Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to another Monday Morning Art Talk. So welcome today. I wanted to talk about something that just happened to me uh, today. Most of you may have known. Um, just quick in regards to your the books for Kickstarter. All of you guys should be slowly getting your books, except those in Canada, Australia, Europe, everywhere else in the world because of how long it takes books to get there. But all the books have been sent out and it is my hope that you just love this book, you embrace it. Um, please, if you can, if you have the time, you can go to silvertunes.com and up on the bar there, it says book review. If you like it or don't like it, hopefully not, um, please write a, um, a comment there. That would just be great. So let other people know about uh, how you find the book. Um, so speaking of books, I just wanted to share with you just an experience that happened this morning and this is just um, about me thinking that all my books, uh, a lot of them, over 300, no, no, almost 175 or so books uh, being stolen uh, from my house. So. This last week, you know, and this applies with just um, just work. And I think, you know, what you realize is when you're doing working all the time, your mind's not always going to be clear. So things we lose control. And this is a, this is again an experience that you have to learn from your experiences. So this morning, what happened was, you know, every day, if you guys have been seeing my posts, I was just working, signing, and my wrist actually did get a little sore. But it's a good problem to have, and it was my, you know, my pleasure to sign each book. And you're packing, and you're shipping, and you're taping, and every day I was going. Man, just thinking about the people that wake up every morning and have to do this, and that's their job, and they clock in, and they're for Amazon and all these other things, and they're taping, and they're bagging, and they're boxing, and they're just in a routine, this crazy routine every single day, and the monotony of that is just like, makes you realize and appreciate um, what other people do on an everyday basis, and that, that was like a cool little awareness and awakening that, you know, I see it all the time when I'm watching How It's Made or these shows, but you don't really think about it until you're actually doing it. Um, anyway, just through, through the exhaustion that I was having, just fatigue, because my body doesn't work like that. I'm usually at my desk, I'm drawing. So all of a sudden it activated a different thing. Anyway, my mind was just kind of been out of it these last few days and I had moved all these carts with all the books in front of my house. My wife said, move them, put them all there out of the way and I shifted some things around and I moved one of the carts off to the corner and I stuck another uh, batch, an empty cart in front of the other ones just to sort of hide the other ones. But anyway, woke up this morning, we were getting ready for the post office to come pick up the books and all of a sudden my wife says, Stephen, why... Why is that one open? I'm like, what are you talking about? And she's all, oh, that one's open. There's no books in it. You know, I'm just hysteria. Like, I'm all, what? And I went around and saw him like, I just had a heart attack. I mean, I was just in, again, not thinking clearly about what I did last night and just everything, my world exploded right there. Just like everything, all these books are gone. 
I only ordered enough hardcover books for the Kickstarter campaign people. So people aren't going to get their Kickstarter. So all of a sudden, a million miles an hour, all these scenarios, like I, had to, I called the cops. Just, you know, we were just like, oh, it was just, just, just a disaster. You know, you, you don't realize, it's amazing. Well, you do realize, because many of you guys have gone through it, where your body can all of a sudden react to something and an implosion happens through your your neck, your, your head, your heart, just because what you feel is a real situation has just completely overtaken your body. And all of a sudden in that moment, just that the world crashed on me. It just completely crashed. Like, I cannot believe this is happening. Who would do this? Why would this happen? Um, and, and just pure chaos. And But I can tell you, at this moment that this was happening and you know I cried because I was I was physically upset about this uh, just again knowing knowing not only the amount of work that's been put into this knowing the amount of money that I just lost at that point I paid for all the shipping labels um, everything was you know um, and knowing that all the work ahead of me I got to count every single book that I've sent out now I got to now contact, you know, just go through every single name on the list, all the Kickstarter followers, see who has been sent out and who hasn't been sent out. I mean, I was looking at hours and hours of, of just chaos and just trying to plan. But at that moment, you know, when I'm just starting just to calm down just a little bit, again, just I, I don't explode. I don't go crazy. I'm just... It's all in my head and, and within my wife. And I said, Heidi, you know what we have to, what we're going through right now, we know we cannot change this situation. This is where the car comes back into the um, analogy. You change, accept, or remove yourself from a situation. And at that moment, these are the situations where you got to throw yourself back into that. So I told Heidi, I said, Heidi, stop. She kept thinking, I should have done this and I should have done that and I should have moved the car up closer and I should have done this and I should have... And she says, Heidi, you didn't. This is a what if. You cannot change the situation. It is what it is. We cannot remove ourselves from the situation. We cannot change the situation. There was one thing we have to do and that is accept the situation and that's where we were going with this and I'm accepting that people, someone's stolen my books, I got to do all this and this is going to be a pain in the ass and I got to deal with this and this is the worst thing that could have ever, ever happened at this time and, uh, and, and blah, 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 blah. But again, it, the acceptance. And it's like at that moment, I'm just sitting there and I'm drinking my coffee and my kids are sitting on the stairs and they're just trying to offer any sort of suggestions, but they're just like, you know, confused, seeing mom and dad in a panic and, and crazy, and they're just being all good about it. You know, my son told me before any of this is all dad, you know, just I'm posting, I'm always, I got to post it. You know, if people are trying to sell the book, they can only get kids. Dad, you don't know all the facts yet. You need to, it's a son, don't, just don't talk to me right now. I got to do this, you blah, blah, blah. And he was right, you know, it's just like I shouldn't, you know, just get all the facts down. But anyway, through this sort of lull of just quiet time, my wife goes, what about that card over there? I'm like, what card? What? And she's all, that one. And so she goes around, she goes, ah, they're there, they're there. Oh my God, the books are there. I'm like, what? I'm like, oh my God, I can't remember. I can't remember. I, I can't, for I, I, I totally forgot to put the... To, to, to put the, but I put them over there and just like, I mean, and all of a sudden that relief. So all of a sudden your body goes through waking up in the morning feeling good about this whole delivery. I'm sending out 400 books today. Then it goes through complete breakdown and shutdown and a belief that this was it. And then all of a sudden your body gets shot back with like pure adrenaline. Like I took a needle and shot it in my arm of just like adrenaline of just joy, you know, just pure joy. And for your body to go through that, you know, it was just crazy just to think what my body was capable of doing that at that moment, I believed at the end of the world that this was it, you know, in that moment, then realized I accept this, but all of a sudden to get that joy back and realize that there aren't any shitty people out there in my neighborhood <laughs> or there any artists out there doing this, you know, that like, what the fucking artist, excuse my language, who is going to steal my books and try to do that. They have to have known me. It must have been an inside job. 
And I'm just like, you know, what? and realizing that that's not the case and that wasn't the reality and all these assumptions and all these things that all these worries, all these stresses weren't real at that situation. Now, granted, there's things that are going to happen to you in life that you don't get that happy result. You know, it could be losing someone special to you that you're not going to get them back. They're not, you know, and that's what it is. It's a loss. And that's the one thing that I know, even just through Buddhism, is that um, the thing that we... We, we, we face our biggest thing is the, the reality of, of, of loss is knowing that that's the only thing in life that causes the most pain in life is loss, loss of uh, possessions and loss of people. And the reality is possessions, possessions, you can always get possessions back. But yeah, you're going to feel if you lost your car, you're going to panic. If you if you if you've lost your whatever it is, your, your favorite Ben, your favorite sketch, I lost my sketchbook once I left it on a plane, it was almost finished. And I lost my sketchbook. And that was a possession to me that I grieved over of losing my sketchbook. And, and we grieve over these losses of sometimes these possessions. And that's what causes pain is that loss of that. So as and you think about that, and you go, but you know, it's not the end of the world. We know that now, right? We, we do, if we truly think about it. You know, it's, it hurts at that moment. But then when you lose a person in your life, someone meaningful to you, knowing they're never going to get them back, that causes the real pain. And so that's why we go through this. This is why we go through this fear and anxiety and we go through that based on that. So, uh, but having it back was, again, this joy. But I wanted to share with you that idea and that journey that, you know, one can go through, and I have on my Jeep, written on my Jeep, and I have it on my bracelets here, you know, and every now and again, I bring them to conventions. So if you ask me at a convention and you see me, do you have one of your bracelets you made? Spend a calm life. Uh, ask me for it, and I'll give you one. Um, and I have that on my Jeep, and it says, spend a calm life. And it's just... Uh, to remind me every time I'm in my car and every day just to realize that this is what is you got to be calm you know we try to be but you got to be shocked it's not always going to be there you're going to have to be shocked into that you're going to be tested and for me the biggest lesson I learned from this was I believe in warnings I believe in signs I believe in these whispers these whatever it may be and at that moment through there, I realized my hand was starting to hurt. This comes back to my hand. My hand was hurting this morning. My neck's hurting. My back's hurting. I tell you, I'm going to go to the chiropractor and a masseuse the same day when all this is over um, with. But I realized my hand was hurting. I'm like, man, I know, but I, I got to keep going. I got to keep going. I got a hundred, another 150 books to sign today trying to get on track. But when this happened, I realized, you know, what was the lesson here? Go back to my, my message, spend a calm life. And the reality was the lesson that I learned was I was being told by the universe to slow it, slow it down a bit, slow it down. People are going to be okay. Just, you know, we always have that guilt and that we want to take care of, make sure people are, everyone's taken care of. And, that, you know, and, and sometimes we don't think about ourselves because we're so concerned about how other people may feel, how other may, people may react. And the reality is you got to take care of numero uno. This is your body, your your life and, and, and your body, and you don't want to break down. So it was a reminder to me. I didn't just let this go. And I would say anything that happens in your life, don't just put it to the side. Whatever chaotic situation is happening, try to think about what it might mean. What, what, is the, what is the meaning and purpose of this? And so I realized through this, the purpose is for me just to, I, to, I, I got to relax today. I'm, I'm going to go get a massage today and I'm going to relax and I'm going to just, just chill and uh, take a little breather and go on a walk, you know, um, and, and, and do this sort of stuff. And that was the lesson that I learned. So it's like paying attention to it because it says, Hey, Steven, you need to take a little bit of a rest. You've been going a million miles an hour and just, uh, with the book, the campaign, your freelance, everything you're doing, slow it down, slow it down. And I always have that mindset and I do, and I do. And I honestly, I do. I, I'm not going a thousand miles an hour all the time because I realize this, but there was this point where right now I was given that message. So the message is number one, just, uh, just slow it down. Uh, don't feel you got to get all the books out, you know, in such a rush. I'm doing my best, but tomorrow I'll resume again. I'll get back into it. But again, taking it down just a little bit of a notch. And that's the lesson that um, I really got out of this. So it was it was a good thing. And then the, the other lesson I learned is I'm not putting any more of my books inside those crates and leaving them out at nighttime because even though I trust where I live, is that a warning? Was that a warning that moved those because maybe someone's going to do it? 
is that the warning? So lesson learned, I'm pulling those in. So I'm not going to do that uh, anymore for the next few days. And, and that's it. So that, that's the message that I wanted to share today was uh, learn from anything that sort of comes your way. It is important to pull back and slow it down um, for sure. So uh, hopefully you, you got something from this and I can share my lesson that I've learned with you that you can um, hear that and embrace it and understand it. And maybe there's someone else in your life that you know is going through it that you can share the message with too and say, hey dude, just just you need to slow it down. And this is why, this is why these, these same things keep reoccurring. Do you ever notice sometimes in your life where you're just, you're, things are just, you know, happening and it's almost like you keep getting the, punched the same way every time in different lessons, different ways, like you, you, you're not slowing down or so something bad happens and you go, God dang, why'd that happen? And then you don't pay attention, you keep going, it could be anything and then it happens again or someone's uh, treating you in a certain way or something's happening and they keep saying, so now it's another person treating you in the same way. Are you missing something? Is there something that the universe is trying to tell you to pay attention to? that you're just not and um, I think that's that's the lesson that's the lesson is, is slow it down and in every way you know it just don't get caught up in the in the rat race of things do what you're going to do just you know you, you, I'm not saying don't work hard you know don't think that you can just sit there and do nothing and nothing's going to happen the reality is work hard work towards something you believe in make something happen but 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 to give yourself time and and I in all honesty I wish the studios would learn wow. this lesson I wish they would realize that you know even though people are binge watching and doing all this stuff right now and it's just like you know just just crazy madness with the way the industry is that um, they realize that they don't have to have everything out so soon you know that you can, we can pull back I know that we're in this fast paced world where everything's got to be done right away and the tools we make have to make things quicker and faster, you know, God forbid we spend time sort of turning an actual screwdriver anymore, you know, oh my God, you mean it's not doing it for you or, you know, everything's automated, oh my God, you mean you gotta, you, you, you're so that you're so impatient that you have to have this machine do order your food for you right at that moment, you know, we need this, this delivery, we gotta have it right now, if we don't have it on our doorstep, we need drones, we need drones because we need things dropped off of our door right now by tomorrow, we can't wait and this culture of not waiting for anything is making everyone insane we're going crazy when the reality is I I, 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 I long for the, the 1980s again you know I long for the 1990s where it was honestly a slower pace and even the way productions were made from the productions I'd work on a production I had six weeks to work on a show, five weeks to work on a show. Now we got two weeks to work on a show, one week to work on a show. It's just, it's it's madness, and everyone just needs to spend a calm life and settle down with this. Is they, do, do they not realize what they're just doing to the individual artist and just they're burning people out? It's like, do people not care anymore? I mean, could you imagine a studio that would honestly say, you know what? We're going to calm it down. We're going to just pull back a bit. And that show that was supposed to go up by Friday, you know what? We're going to move it up a week because if it comes on the air one week later, who's going to care? Who's even going to know the difference? It's just like everyone, even within the studio system, sometimes you work so hard and trying to work on a specific scene and you're trying to work on something and trying to make it perfect and just know that you're busting your ass and everything to make that so... You know, you're driving people insane. You're 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 working people so hard, knowing that when that comes out on TV, have you ever put those? You know, uh, you know, just looked at some of the animation that gets back overseas on TV, of a bad drawing with the animation. That was the end result, and it's not that great. Do you think any kid cared? You think anyone cared to stop and go? Oh my God, that frame was so bad. No, who's doing it? It's us, right? It's like I was talking about this with some of the people that came yesterday to help me. You know, it's just like it's the artists. We're the critical ones. No one else cares. You know, it's just they, they're happy to get the content. They're happy to see something. They're happy to laugh. They're happy to be entertained because that's all they want is to be entertained. Yet we kill ourselves. Yeah, we want to do the best we can do on the production side and make it good, knowing that they're going to mess it up a bit overseas. But enough's enough of sort of like the the the, the whiplash and all that. And I wish people would just get a, the message. 
and hear that you're going to have more productivity and creativity from these artists out there in every single facet, every single field, every graphic design industry aspect, every animation studio, every illustration job, everything. These people are going to get just better quality. Isn't that what we want? Better quality? Wouldn't you rather drive a car, get in a ride, a bike, or do anything knowing that someone spent a week to make it as opposed to just built it in 30 seconds? You know, what's, what's that going to do? I'm looking, you'd rather have the quality than the quantity. And I don't know, the sooner I think we're going to have to collapse again. And that's my fear. It's, it's not a fear. I don't have the fear. But the, the reality is I, we're going to have to collapse. We're going to have to go through such a downward spiral. And we're going to have to all just go through some traumatic thing for everyone just to wake up and realize that we're going too fast. I mean, it happened with the housing market. We saw what happened with that, how it collapsed because of the, the greed and the need for everyone just to, um, every, you just got to have it, got to have it, got to have it, you know, that mentality. So why don't we just start all just trying to live just back in, move ourselves back in time a bit and maybe just slow it down again and just do that and maybe start that movement. That's what we need to do for ourselves is begin this movement of just slowing it down just a little bit and get back to our roots and get back to reality and, and take deep breaths and smell the air and smell the roses, whatever happened to that. It just went away. It's gone away because of this this need. And it's the, again, it's a, it's a, the internet's a, it's the greatest thing on this planet, but it's also a curse too. And I feel like it just gives people more and more. I talked about it last week, the anxiety and all this. And so what we need to do is just really just try to think about that. So um, this was going on a little bit longer today. Anyway, I hope it helped you and gave you some food for thought and maybe you can be the catalyst. You can start. You In your own world, you start slowing it down. You start to just do what it is that you need to do. Focus on what you need to do. Get to where you want to go and um, don't worry about again all the all the other all the other things and just remember that um, everything happens for a reason. This happened to me for a reason today because it was telling me, Stephen, slow it down, little buddy, slow it down. All right, guys, it was great. Uh, I'll see you. At your, I'll be at WonderCon, uh, but you, by the time you see this. WonderCon would have already happened. Uh, thanks again for watching. Um, I hope you're enjoying your book. Please, um, you know, I would love your review on my book. Again, um, thank you guys. Um, and I just got to say, when I posted that all my books would be stolen, the way so many people were responding on the on on Facebook and sharing it and trying to say if you're seeing any books being sold on eBay or Etsy or anything else, you know, you just everyone just came to and. That's what this community is all about, and I appreciate it, and I appreciate you guys, and I appreciate just... It's the emotional side of me. I appreciate the art community and the support and, then, and <laughs> snap out of it, man. And I appreciate you guys watching these videos. Make it a great week. Take care. Hello, this is Steven, and I just wanted to tell you about this cool thing that I'm doing right now through my website at silvertunes.com. It's a Skype mentorship. In a sense, what I want to do is just talk to you, meet you, tell me about things that are happening in your life. See if there's anything that I could do to help you. I can look over your artwork, do your portfolio, and just maybe try to push you in the right direction that you want to take your life and your journey, all right? So you can go to silvertunes.com, go to classes, click on mentorship, and you can learn all about it. We can try to arrange a time, set up a date. It doesn't matter where you live in the world. Um, and I just wanted to make it just very affordable just to open it up because I love doing this. I love meeting people from all over the planet. It's a really cool thing. And uh, with this technology, why not? So that's it. Thanks.
Go. Go back. Go back. Go back. Great. Go back. Go back.